Hi everyone, I'm David from Bisparta. And my problem is I'm a freelancer, a founder, and I haven't saved any money for my retirement ever. And together with a couple of really cool guys here, I think we come up with a new way to save money for our retirement, which is also, we do it now by paying for any kind of stuff we buy, absolutely anything. We save for later by taking a small amount from that money and we also get rewarded for it with small uh, things like a Netflix subscription for free. Okay, we have a demo to show you guys. this looks so far oh, okay so yeah I guess we don't have the internet huh not on this computer I guess Sorry about that. So, you save a little by every time you pay for something. The setup is very easy. You enter your name. Yeah, I'm 30 years old. <laughs> works this way. I spend between 800 and 1,200. I travel a lot. This is not really functional right now, but it can be set up very easily. So we use this uh, slider to decide what kind of percentage it goes into to our uh, the pension, depending on the spending we do. So this will be like 4% of the amount I spend every month. And depending on what you, you decide, you can uh, have a bigger pension. And the, the rewards part comes when you reach different levels, like you would raise uh, maybe 1,000 euros in your account, you would be able to uh, get one of these rewards. We would set up partnerships with Netflix or any of companies like this with services which young people desire. Okay. <laughs> my slides. Oh, man. No, my internet is really not working. I'll try Wi Fi. Uh, there's no Wi Fi. I think this was a bad decision to have them online, right? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Could we fix it or go without? So I'll just recap real quick while I try to fix the problem. Uh, um, you, they, are, they made a method or a, tec a technology or a methodology in which you decide I have a basic spending every month but I want to add an extra percentage above what I've spent per month to go to my savings. So if I decide 4% per month, is what, I, what I should be above my, uh, my uh, uh, monthly savings, should go to my, uh, my pension. Uh, this system just follows what you spend and adds that percentage but brings it to a pension account in which you have access to at the, end of, uh, at the start of your pension. Am I correct for the group there? Yes? Yes, and it's all automatic. So you, it, there's only one sign-up process, and uh, afterwards it happens automatically every month. Yeah. Yeah. 
maybe we could have some questions already until I go to the next slide. Any questions so far? Maybe from the judges? Okay, it is clear, I hear. So to understand correctly, each time you make a payment with your card, you get automatically withdrawn a certain percentage into a savings account. Have you thought of where to invest? Is that a, a bank account? Is that? So we, we believe that Acmea needs this uh, tool because it's a social way to sell this package from Central Behar's part and phone later. It's a low cost and online solution and very easy to implement, improve and expand. And the way we first want to do it, to evaluate it uh, directly with the low cost awareness campaign dedicated to founders and freelancers like me and many other people who are becoming freelancers or around Netherlands and Europe overall. A and this is uh, the team we, who we worked on it. I would like them to come on stage and thank, thank them and thank Akmea for, for this great hackathon. We enjoyed it a lot. All right, thank you very much. There were some technical compli uh, complications. So I'd like to suggest if you have to demo something further, maybe offline, you get another a few minutes uh, for the judges. Okay? All right. Thanks. Is it clear? Anyone of you? Yeah. Okay. I, is it already working? Uh, basic principles, yes. So we just we, 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 can we haven't integrated uh, like the the uh, central behavior processes mm -hmm. and all that, but it's quite easy to do it. Like I don't think it would take more than a day. Okay. Oh, that's cool. No, <laughs> more than a day from our side. I don't know about the legal part. G yeah, the, given the fact that you have internet, right? Sorry? That the internet works. Yeah, and that. <laughs> okay, but th that's cool. Thanks. Well, uh, my compliments uh, for your presentation. Thanks. Uh, well, I have no question, uh, but I would like to say that, well, given the fact that uh, I'm responsible for exactly this uh, distribution within uh, Centenaal Beheer, I think the very good thing what you did was you kept it very, very, very easy and automatic. Yeah. My compliments for your, uh, your cool. good work. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone? Yeah, okay. Uh, perhaps you, you guys can tell us something more about the reward system. There's some yeah. sort of reward system behind it. Eh? So when yeah. you save, you're rewarded. Mm -hmm. So the, the way we think this ma might be a higher cost like for, for the insurance company, but it would incentivize the young people to do it because they, it's an extra thing. What are the prices which you would really like? Which would motivate you guys? Like we will probably do like uh, people to recommend us what they will like and we'd uh, try to make those deals for them. And we could buy in bulk and then it's a good deal. I have to ask okay. the next team, Achmea Desh, to get up here and uh, get ready. Thanks, yeah. guys. Thanks. Very great. We are uh, Echmea Dash. First of all, I want to thank. Oh, I want to thank the first team for coming up first. It's always difficult to come up first, especially seeing as how this is. Well, it's after a long. It's after a long day of work. They've been uh, doing their their best to make the thing in 24 hours. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy to be able to follow them up. So, um, we've got a lot of. We've got a lot of stuff to show you. My name is uh, Killian, this is uh, Noel, this is Luke, and this is Florian. Uh, we have 
a huge amount of things to get to, so I'll try and get through the presentation as quick as possible so we can actually show you some features. Right. First of all, we have the requirements of the project. The requirements are actually uh, relatively simple. This is a project where uh, it's actually meant for, well, it's meant for, uh, like, uh, how, how should I say it, like doctors or well, uh, insurance companies to be able to see and contact their customers based on the data that we have in, the, in our database, which will become more apparent once we actually get to the demonstration part. Uh, yeah, the, the main selling points of this, uh, of this product are the privacy. The user has a full control over what kind of information he, uh, he's willing to give away. And the doctors and medical professionals will be able to like, more easily track uh, all that information and, well, get useful data out of that. So if you could just, ah, right. Um, the main goals of this are, well, proactive care. It's uh, to make sure that doctors have a clear idea of, well, have like some history of uh, what's been going on by means of sensors and measuring a person's blood pressure, blood oxygen level, pretty much anything that we can measure that has to do with health uh, so that they can provide advice and, uh, well, pretty much deal with problems before they actually become problems. Yeah, as I mentioned before, the customer has uh, has c full control over their data, like data that they do not want to give away publicly. They don't have to. They can also decide uh, if family members or relatives have access to their data or not, which you will see further in the demonstration. Uh, yeah, well, I think that's uh, pretty much it for the de for the uh, well. Uh, demo part of this uh, thing, so let's actually get to the product itself. So I'm going to hand off to uh, my colleague Niels here. Well, uh, so let's go to the part we actually um, really uh, looked forward to showing you, which is the app itself. Uh, yes. Uh, when you go to the Acme Dash, you first arrive at the login screen, just like any other site. Uh, here you have the possibility to either log in or register, and the register menu, as you can see, is really easy. Just enter your name, your birthday, your email, and a password, and you're done. So we set, we already set up a, uh, an account for you, or for the client, which we are now logged into. Look, that's my profile pic right there. Um, now. Uh, this is the home screen. There's not anything on it yet because we haven't set that up yet. We did enter some measurements from our data, so we do have data. So now we can go to Grafiek Instellingen, which means yeah, graph settings, in which we can select everything we want to pop up on the home screen. So for example, um, intracranial pressure and the temperature of my head. We have some sample data for that and the heartbeat and my blood sugar levels. So now we go back to the home page and we see all our graphs. Do take in mind these are not really realistic, they're just randomly generated, so I'm not this unhealthy. Um, well, uh, if you want to specifically look at some kind of uh, statistic, you can go to graphs and select the category for which you want to see something. So just select uh, heart. Now we can see everything that has to do with my heart. So my heartbeat, my blood sugar, my blood pressure, everything that is measured by the APIs we work against. Um, yeah, let's continue to uh, authorizations. Yeah. So this is the part we talked about. This is what we are really excited about. Um, you actually have control of your own data. You can say, I want um, this I want my dentist to know my, well, let's see, my uh, statistics about my heart. I don't know, something like that. So now we select this, we save it, and we'll get back to that later when the dentist is actually logged in. Um, well, that's pretty much it, I think, yeah, except the profile which is, of course, a necessary feature. You can edit your email address, your name, your birthday, and even your profile pic. So, yeah, that's pretty much it.
Now, um, can I ask you something? This is Dr. Umblo. Yes. Can I ask you something yeah, about sure. the authorizations? Is, is this like uh, a sort of dynamic uh, authorization? So if you if this, then that. So if I go to the emergency, all registers are up and uh, everybody can look on into the my, uh, my data. Yeah. But when I'm uh, at home, I don't want anybody to see my data. Is this um, also? Yeah, you can just change it whenever you like. You can delete the, the authorization for your, yeah, your first aid. For example, mm -hmm. for the for the hospital. But I, I would like to, uh, when I arrive at the first aid, then probably I'm not able to set up all these uh, uh, these things. So I would like that if uh, if this, then that. that if I arrive at an emergency, then everybody can look into my data. Is that is that also a feature? Um, which we didn't implement it in this version, but it would be possible under some kind of log file for emergencies because we don't want people to just look into your data, so it would have to be mm -hmm. uh, controlled. The doctor says, I don't know, uh, he's bleeding out. I need to see everything about his allergies and his blood. So uh, now the system uh, makes a note about that. Uh, this doctor looked into that for, uh, well, yeah, uh, for emergency reasons. Yeah. And when you get home after the, the after the surgery, you can select, yeah, this was planned or this was not planned. and uh, Acmea or any health insurer can look after that if there's any doctor uh, yeah, playing foul games with this. Well, uh, as I said, we are now uh, in the homepage of Dr. Florian. He's my doctor um, and he has one option I don't have, which is patience. Uh, I, just, I just authorized him to look into my uh, files, so now he has this. I uh, authorized him for my heart, right? Now he can see everything that happened uh, with me. Yeah. So, um, someone might have noticed this guy over here. He just uh, did something with the phone. This is what we uh, are, well, we are also really uh, excited about because you can also uh, update your status live. He just measured his heart rate with this simple little app which just looks at your finger and calculates the heart rate. And the last one, which is about, it's uh, not really high. So we now get a notification, your uh, heart rate is really low and uh, you can do this about it. So for example, try to do more physical activities and uh, exercise more. Uh, can, I, can I ask a question as well? Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, you uh, set the example for heart heartbeat. Yeah. Where do you get your other data from? Um, this is really uh, modular, so this heart rate thing is uh, just a, a yeah, like a ten-line piece of code. So that just submits the data to the server. The the, the app can't actually see into my data. It just says, uh, on this time, my heart rate was well uh, 64 or something. Yeah, but who will be the provider of all the other data? I mean, the heartbeat, you can, you can measure yourself? Well, uh, at the moment, uh, of course, because we have limited access to all these, da all these uh, specifics, and some of them aren't even you know, possible to, uh, to access constantly. That's why, it's, uh, that's why we filled it with uh, dummy data, effectively data that's still semi-realistic, but not actual, like, it's not data from actual people. Right. So this is really just a plan for the future when, uh, when these businesses come out with their own APIs that we can implement and use in conjunction with our system that we have developed here. Yeah. Did you also think about uh, comparisons with peers? Comparis comparisons with what, sorry? With, with peers. With peers. Other people from your same age, that kind of. Oh, peers. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, well, no. At the, well, you can, of course, authorize uh, a colleague or a friend to have access to your statistics. However, we don't have a let's compare and see who is the healthiest or who is the unhealthiest. We do not have that at the moment. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Team Echmea Dash with a great demonstration. Uh, next up is Team Impact. So if you could step up and uh, prepare yourselves. You guys have HDMI? Yeah. All right.
The earthquake. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, we are Team Impact, and today I'm going to challenge you all. And we are in the creativity substage, so I'm going to our challenge. We are going to make you think differently about this task. Um, so without further ado, we are Team Impact. My name is Mo. I'm a computer science, first year computer science at University College London. Hi everyone, my name is Vivek. I'm doing philosophy, politics and economics at UCL, first year also. Hey guys, I'm Amir and I'm a second year economics student. So, let's get started. What is the problem? The problem is that people make short-sighted decisions and we need experience to make good decisions. The issue with this is the experience comes too late we get the experience after we've already made the decisions. <clears throat> what we need um, is a way to have the experience and then go back in time to be able to change our decisions. Now for me, there's only two ways to do this. <clears throat> one of them is a time machine. And if anyone knows where to get one of those, then I guess you can solve the problem. The second... <laughs> Uh, the second is virtual reality. Um, let me explain with an example. So, everyone loves to drink and party when they're young. They don't start making better decisions until they become ill, they get liver disease, or they experience alcoholism. This experience comes too late. Would you drink as much if you lived a day in the life of someone with liver disease? This is where we come in. Impact is a service that allows people to experience the lives of others firsthand. In this example, they'd live the life of a sufferer of liver disease or alcoholism, and they'd learn, they'd experience this, and they'd decide for themselves when they go back to their real lives if they'd want to make the same decisions, if they'd want to have that extra beer. Um, and my second example is one about pensions. Young people don't know much about what it's like to live when you're 70. We don't know what it's gonna be like. We, don't, we can't see the future. But if we could, if we could go and see what would happen if we didn't save anything for our pension, I think we'd make a different decision. Um, now I'm gonna pass on to my colleague. Okay, so how does this actually work? So first of all, for the person who wants to share this experience, it's actually quite simple. So for the person who wants to share their experience, they require a 360-degree camera, which is very easily accessible. And the person wears that camera throughout the day, and we firsthand will be able to ex experience what that person goes through in their e everyday, day-to-day -day life. And this will be uh, uh, uploaded on an online platform which can be viewed. Now this experience can be viewed in two different ways. The user can either purchase a virtual reality headset and actually wear the headset and be fully immersed in the um, situation that that person has in the everyday day to day life. Or you could simply have the video uploaded online and you can use the feature of the 360 video where you can rotate the video and actually explore the environment and just feel what the, um, what the uh, person is experiencing. And we would have loved to show you an actual um, uh, 360 video camera live feed and um, a real life uh, VR headset, but we have something else prepared for you. This is the next best thing. We will, this is a video about uh, voodoo healing in, uh, in Haiti and this might seem a little bit indirect in the beginning, but the reason we chose this, photo, uh, the, this video is um, it's specifically very engaging and emotional demonstration of a genuine ex uh, experience through the eyes of someone going through a personal life event, um, showing their interactions and emotions, which reflect the core idea behind our solution. The earthquake made me live to see things 
I never thought I would see. Right after the earthquake, my husband died. But I know his spirit will be at the ceremony. Just, just a question in between then. <laughs> sure. Then you, you guys have time to uh, repair this. Is this meant to, uh, re to really uh, be, uh, relive this with someone else who really is present at the same time, real time online? Um, uh, or more on I wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be real time. It would be more of the person uh, recording their experiences and then having the platform where they would upload the video and then the accessibility of the person viewing those videos and then uh, experiencing what they've been through and then ma making their decisions based on what they've experienced. What, what would, for instance, happen when you... Uh, Facebook didn't buy these virtual reality things for nothing. Eh? They did that to really live the, the life of someone else at Just that exactly. moment and share experiences. And, and eh? because they relive that experience, because it's so immersed, and because it goes with this topic is that it feels like you would not make the same decisions that maybe the person with the liver uh, condition does, or you would emphasize with them and yeah. actually make your decisions. But, uh, can, can you imagine a little bit what would happen when you would do this uh, without the video in between, just, uh, just really having someone with a camera and living the life of someone else for that moment? What would happen then? Uh, what do you mean exactly? Yeah, when you make a wild oh, life connection with someone who is actually in prison or having this disease or uh, going through something. Yep, that, that's, that's, yeah, that's something. Yeah, let's say looking at the impact, I can imagine. No, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, yeah, that's actually uh, very, yeah, that's a, that would be actually a more of an immersive because it, you would yeah. actually know that person's doing that at the same time, you're understanding what they're doing. Yeah, at like the when you look at the impact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true, exactly, yeah. Ah, but it's good. Yeah. I mean, exactly on that point, the, we believe in this idea for three main reasons. The first is that it is an incredibly immersive and intense experience. It's very intimate and it's tangible and personal. So someone can really experience the life of someone else. They put themselves in the position of another person's experiences. Um, and in our age, digital age, with YouTube and reality TV, this is exactly the appetite of consumers. Um, indeed, People often have uploaded YouTube videos and vlogging posts of their experiences through ex uh, cancer. Um, and these have reached views of about up to two million. Um, but the difference with our idea, with impact, is that virtual reality just heightens the experience, makes it more real, more intense. And related to that, the second reason we really believe and are passionate about this idea is the fact that it's inherently empathetic and humane, core values of Acmea. So it connects all types of people from regardless of their, their background or their age, it's going to connect people and bring them together. And the third reason is despite uh, the, the advanced technology at play here, the actual solution that we've developed, we believe is extremely simple. It's uh, because all you need is a camera and a device to watch these videos upon. And this is going to enhance the power of this solution to engage and multiply. Question, Question at the back, sorry. I hear a lot of ideals and I hear a lot of, well, you obviously put a lot of effort into the presentation of the whole thing, but has any kind of, aside from just an idea, have you got anything else? Because at the moment it just seems like a presentation. So the, the huge difficulty for us was that we couldn't go out and find someone suffering from lung cancer as an example and have them film their, you know, a day in their life and have a snippet of that. So we wanted to show you that video from Haiti as an example of what it could look like. Um, so that is a, a dem our kind of demonstration of what um, we would hope to create. Um, so a similar type of experience through the eyes of someone else. Um, but two challenges still remain. 
One is how do we persuade people to show their lives? Because obviously it's very intimate. Um, but for us, this isn't an issue because YouTube is evidence that people are very willing to show themselves and their experiences. Secondly, having experienced and undergone bad things, people have a lot of motivation and are very willing to help others. So we believe that people will be very willing to come forward and upload these videos of their own experiences. Secondly, um, the second would be how, how people uh, would be, w be encouraged to watch these videos. And we believe Acmea could publicize these videos to the existing customer base and also um, roll out a program across schools working with the government to have subsidies for um, the deployment of these videos across schools. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. It's Team Impact. Uh, next up is Team Disinsure. But I have to tell you, just now I've been informed the fifth team has entered the competition who've been working under the radar, so I have absolutely no idea what they're up about. Um, okay. Also, uh, uh, you notice there's a lot of technical complications with a lot of switching of the, of the laptops. This comes with a job, uh, 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 you know, um, very good job for the guys just fixing it and uh, problem solving it at the minute. And it shows that they're involved with IT, so. Uh, yeah, okay. I uh, hope this one will go without any problems. I'll guess so. Computers hooked up. You guys ready? Who's going to talk? Yeah, all right. Here you go. Okay, thank you for your patience. What's the problem with today's insurance? Well, it's this, and this, and this. There's always an intermediate party controlling data, selling stuff, and creating massive inefficiencies. How do we cut out the middlemen? Imagine a system that is controlled not by a large company, but by you, the users. Safe, secure, no data leaks, no back doors, completely trustless. There's one big technology everyone's looking at right now, and that's Bitcoin. Creating a secure transactions, smart contracts, and decentralized security. But we need more, because a contract, no matter how secure, can always be gamified. Um, so solidarity only sticks when there's a community. What we need is trustless pacts with a trusted community. <laughs> we present cover. Okay. Cover allows people to enter into insurance contracts with the community. These are called pacts. Using blockchain technology, cover is a fully decentralized autonomous organization. When a claim is made, Cover presents the claim to a subset of users who will audit the claim. This is the core consensus of the network that we call smart communal auditing. And this is what it looks like. Uh, it's as easy to use as any other voting app, and millennials are more than familiar with it. Um, the user looks at the evidence provided and any additional details of the claimant um, that they deem necessary. Then with a quick swipe, they can vote whether to approve or reject a claim and give their reasons. Cover makes claims super easy. Of course, registering a new product create and creating a new pact is also super easy. Uh, you provide the details of your product, Cover calculates the amount of insurance you need and the, uh, the time span, and uh, this is all done behind the scenes. Uh, you can even do this for a pay-as-you-go system. But how do we make sure that people come back to actually use this app, to actually audit other people's claims? 
Well, active members of the community are incentivized to show their involvement by earning badges and merits and points, which can then be later redeemed for discounts and special offers. Um, and users can track their premiums and claim progress uh, in real time and have access to all their personal data at the touch of a button. I see you. I'll have questions at the end. Who is this for? Well, people our age don't really care about insurance, but they do care about their stuff. By cutting out the middlemen, cover isn't just cheaper than any insurance, it's more transparent, more secure, and more social. So, going through this process, what are some of the challenges we encountered? Well, to start with, a third party would have to assess risk. And we'd have to also cover an initial risk to get this started, which could be covered by a crowd fund, could be covered by a reinsurance. Um, but the possibilities are endless. Using Internet of Things, you can connect your cover with vehicles, so you can pay as you drive. You can connect it with electrical items very, very easily. Packs can be smart. We want you to share your usage, share your data, but be in the knowledge that your data is your data. Your premium can be adjusted on the fly and based on your personal history. Okay. We're excited about the future. Get rid of insurance, get covered. Thank you very much, we'll take any questions. Actually, you, you need some money collection up front. So what's, what's the attent incentive for people to invest? Uh, the real incentive would be um, for the uses. Um, so A, it would be cheaper and more interactive than any other insurance policy. Um, there is a premium paid up front in your system. Well, we, we came up with two possible ways. Either you start paying by month, but you only get a smaller amount back if you claim within the first few months. Or we would be able to say, you have to pay the first six months or the first year in one go, so we can build up that pot of money. But this, this could also op open up what an existing community, uh, I don't know if it exists over here, but it's certainly in the UK, you have very short term uh, insurance on, say, using other people's cars or using, especially for young people using their parents' cars, they want to use it for a short time and not have to pay for a long term contract. This would open that up and also give the provide insurance providers and the, the app data about how you're actually using your product, your vehicle, whatever it may be, um, that could inform your insurance decisions later on. How do you deal with the fact that uh, when someone shows this iPhone eh, and then one moment they say, okay, we're going to pay, and then the next person is on and uh, then uh, people say, oh, we won't pay this one. How do you deal with that? How do you make that feel fair? Uh, we gonna like the concept and eh, voting on what to pay. Well, the idea is that, first of all, if a, claim, uh, if a claim is approved, it's usually approved because there's a lot of evidence. There's lots of options. Because if somebody just puts a picture... Yeah, what, what I mean is you when you've sure got the same situation... Uh, yeah, what, when you've got the same situation... Uh, twice time, three times in a year, and then uh, one day people say, okay, now we're going to pay this, and the next time it's not. That wouldn't feel fair. So how do you deal with that? Uh, that's uh, usually a difficulty uh, for insurance companies, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of the things we would do is we would train users on the kind of claims that you should accept and the ones you shouldn't. Like the first time you use it, you'd be like, hey, do you want to learn more about auditing? We say, this is an example of a good claim. This looks like a plausible claim. A claim like this, you shouldn't. Um, also, we thought about the possibility of, uh, first thing, there's stats, so you will get to see how much of the percent of the other uh, community voted in, in what direction. Um, also, it would be possible to have an appeals system. Uh, part of the smart, co smart communal auditing is that only a small subset of the population gets to uh, vote at first, because otherwise it would take too long. But if uh, it gets rejected, you would have one more chance, maybe add some more evidence and then uh, a larger subset of the population would actually yeah, it would be nice to have a learning system in this. Huh? Some sort of learning intelligence. That's, that's nice, yeah. 
Give a big hand. Next up is the crew, right? Lodewijk, ladies and gentlemen. A one-man team? All right. You have to hook up real quick. You have about seven minutes. Okay, so um, I chose the challenge of um, replacing the banks and insurance, um, which I mean it's a, it's a pretty strange challenge to from an insurer, right? All right, so insurance is actually pretty good. Like it works. You can take an insurance, you'll be insured. Um, you do get to have the situation where if you are in a low risk situ, like a low risk person, like I drive very safe. Of course, and um, so I still have to pay for people that drive crazy. Uh, there's a lot of, I mean, some, when people get a lot of money in their hands, sometimes they get a little weird with it. There's, of course, a lot of measures taken in banks and insurance companies to prevent that, but it still happens. Uh, and in a way, you're always betting against your insurer. You're always saying, I think I'll pay my insurer less than he will have to pay me, except when you're poor and you can't pay for the risk, which also happens, but then, you know, that's, it happens. It's pretty usual. So this is a, a diagram of the insurance company. You can see lots of little people are paying the man to give them insurance. And this money mostly goes to the unfortunate people, of course, that happen to run into bad luck. It goes to advertising and customer service, which I'm not sure how big a cost that is actually, because I don't own an insurance company. And a part goes just to the enrichment of the insurance company people, which is the true purpose of the insurance company. <laughs> so we just take away the man from the organization. Um, actually, I, I sort of assumed that the, because there was this little hint that it would be in this direction with Bitcoin and the th like, that people will understand what the DAO is. The Distributed Autonomous Organization, to say it shortly, it's computer code that just runs. You can communicate with it over the internet. It can communicate with you over the internet. You don't really know where it runs. You can't stop it. And it's not associated with anything in particular. It's just code that runs online. Um, so one of the big challenges there is that because there's no legal bindings there, you have to, everything has to run within that code. You don't have a government. You don't have people to go by and you know check people up. So. Um, a simple idea that I had for doing insurance in this way, sort of insurance in the cloud, is to say that for a specific bucket, like a specific category of insurance policies, which for me would be like a car between tw the Neve 25 year old, which is like way more expensive, in the Netherlands, um, only with the, um, if you hit someone else, you only pay for the other person's car in 2017, it's like next year, I can upfront say, well, I'll give this distributed autonomous organization some currency and then in afterwards, after the period has ended, it'll be like, well, we've had so many claims, we had so much money come in, so the premium ended up being, I don't know what it will be, but it'll be whatever it will be. And then either I'll come up wide and I'll get back the money that I paid too much or I'll come up short and that's really bad. I'll just either not get insurance for the period that I had it or I'll get paid out proportional to how much of the money I put in. Um, and of course, this only works for when you have buckets. This works for when you have groups that are large enough to amortize costs on the period that is reasonable to insure it for. If you have huge events like the Titanic crashing or you know any of these things, you need more like an insurance market where I will post that I want this policy for up to this much premium, like this, this larger premium, and others, people that will insure me, they'll say, okay, I will, I will give you that policy, but also, uh, or, and I will do it at this premium. And then people will, of course, bid to go lower. And um, well, the, the lowest premium that is still funded by insurers will be the one that actually, you know, 
becomes the person to insure you. And it's really easy once you have it in the cloud like this to make it a crowdfunding action. So if you do a space launch like SpaceX and you want to insure your missile, you'll say, well, you know, we think it's uh, this sort of risky and if people want to go underneath that, they can. And it's a crowdfunding action. So you, you know, you'll probably get a better deal than you would get at any insurer because there's competition between the insurers to go lower. Um, How do you, let's say, in, uh, what is really interesting is that it looks a little bit like how insurance started to some extent. Uh, then uh, in, in the UK, uh, specifically with Lloyd's, you had some laws we were against betting. How do you ensure that this does not become betting? Because that then you actually had that people were insuring the lives of other people and it was just a bet. So they were, uh, let's say, <laughs> having some, uh, some advantage when someone else would die who was not a relative. Well, uh, stuff like that. How do you do that? Um, so in this case, you post the insurance policy that you want yourself. So you should, you mean, you, you can have this moment of thought, like, am I endangering myself by posting this policy? So that's check one. Um, check two would be that um, you say it's against betting, but now there's no bet either way. It's just bid lower well, and nice, lower. It's a nice principle to some extent. And there's, a, there's full coverage in this system. So that makes sure that the, once the policy is set according to your rules of judgment and somebody has taken your policy, that you will, you will get that policy. There's no question about it. Uh, but of course, this brings up another problem with liquidity where a person, like real insurance companies, they can't pay out everyone at the maximum risk any time. Like, there's not that much money in the world probably. So there's this, um, and of course, if you do have full coverage, you do have all of that money in reserve. There's no corruption issue because the di distributed autonomous organization runs itself, but there is the cost of just having that much currency sit there and do nothing. So you kind of want to have insurance for the market insurance, liquidity. Did I? Uh, it, it just gets a little bit complicated because you have co like the, the risk of two accidents happening together. That is, you know, that has to do with how like how much you like having this this partial coverage. Um, Ten seconds. Well, okay. So to do that, you have to uh, start a prediction market where you actually have bets, and people will stand on either side of the bet and say either it's correct or not. Like these two will occur together. And once the bet is closed, you can have another round where insurers go lower or not, depending on how densely they are allowed to co-occur with other events. And then, you know, you make sure that the insurer still has some sort of factor of money that allows him to probably pay out anything that goes wrong. And the alternative is that instead of having the money up front, you guarantee a loan so that people can always loan and then have to pay back the DIA. A Oh, and there's really no time to explain that, so please visit Bitcoin Wednesday, where I co-organize and we talk about stuff like this. Cool. Thank you very much uh, for showing up short notice. Pretty cool. Hey, please hang around for some information from you. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the jury will now uh, go into seclusion until 4 o'clock. And uh, at 4 o'clock, we will announce the winner at the Achmea booth further up in the other hall. Uh, you will probably be able to find it. Uh, please, for the uh, contestants, please hang around for a little bit more of instructions. Great, thank you very much. See you around, have fun here. <laughs>